This is KHTS News Director Jade Abishan, and I'm here today with California Assemblywoman Suzette martinez Valladeras, who represents the Santa Clarita Valley. How are you doing today, Suzette? Hi, Jade. I am doing really well. I'm um, in Sacramento, and I will be home on Thursdays for the summer, so I'm actually really excited. <laughs> Glad to hear it. <laughs> So let's talk about some of the stuff you've been getting up to. You recently hosted a COVID vaccine clinic and food distribution here in the Santa Clarita Valley. What prompted this idea? <laughs> um, there's, you know, been lots of things that have prompted the idea. But yes, on Friday, last Friday, I partnered with Salva, with Senator Scott Will, with the Boys and Girls Club um, on um, this vaccine clinic and food drive. Um, Salva is an organization that um, works to help support immigrants. So for me, um, one of the um, some of the people most hit hardest by um, COVID were our Latino community. And you know, being a Latina who did receive the vaccine, um, knowing that there's been some skepticism within the Latino community, it was important for me to showcase that you know this is a safe vaccine. You can get it, and my office is available um, to help provide, you know, um, the vaccine as well as um, food because a lot of people are also um, experiencing food insecurity because they're out of work um, um, because of COVID. So uh, that's it kind of prompted for me wanting to specifically engage Latinos to get the vaccine. But we even have we have more clinics that we're doing that are more broad to serve the entire community. Um, and we've partnered with Amazon actually on um, the remainder of our COVID vaccine. Um, and we're doing one on Saturday. We'll make sure um, I don't have that information. I'll get it to you by the end of this uh, um, radio um, show, but uh, really excited to offer it as a resource for our constituents and our community. Well, that sounds awesome. And yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing more information about that. But that is something that's so important. I mean, yeah, we're going back to our new normal. But we have to realize that for a lot of us, we're talking about almost a year worth of people not being able to work. And that still has major effects to this day. Um, absolutely. You know, um, a year and a half later, um, there are lots of businesses that have reopened. So restaurants, Six Flags, which is really you know, um, exciting for me, uh, my assembly bill 420 um, really helped lead the charge to get Six Flags open um, um, with my um, partner on in arts, entertainment, sports, tourism, and internet media, the committee I'm the vice chair on. Um, we fought really hard to get guidelines for theme park reopening, and that came to fruition, and Six Flags is open. But they're, you know, having a tough time hiring people. Um, there are, you know, lots of people that... Um, are staying home for a variety of reasons, whether it's that they're collecting unemployment and it's, they feel like it's safer um, to stay home than to go back to work, um, and or they're making more money on unemployment than they are going back to work. I think a lot of businesses are struggling um, with hiring. Um, so it's something that is on my radar and, you know, trying to um, – be supportive of our local businesses who, who are looking to hire employees. And so it's, you know, a priority and a, and a big reason why a big reason why our community um, is so amazing is because of our local businesses um, that need employees. Uh, so it's something I've, I'm, I'm also working on. Well, that sounds awesome. Let's take a look at some of the other work you've been doing up in Sacramento. So Governor Gavin Newsom recently signed a plan for universal transitional kindergarten into law, I believe. This is very similar to your bill, AB 22, isn't it? Yes. So that was, he signed that into law. So we, um, he signed the budget, uh, Assembly Bill 130, which funds uh, um, transitional kindergarten and, and which funds our expansion, which was Assembly Bill 22, which was the expansion of, of um, transitional kindergarten. So for it, this has like been one of the most exciting things for me. Um, especially as a freshman, as a new member, I have been an advocate for early childhood education, for universal preschool, um, for well over a decade, fighting um, for preschool for all four-year-olds um, because it's so vital. Um, what we know about students who go to preschool is they develop the social and emotional skills that help them excel in not only in kindergarten through 12 but also throughout life. So for me, I've been, you know, pushing for this for over a decade. 
to, to see it come to fruition um, in with the bill that I authored, Assembly Bill 22, and, and also be funded is a huge um, and deeply personal um, um, success for me as a freshman. Um, so what this is going to do is currently, um, I, I remember when I was going into kindergarten, um, the kindergarten date, um, you had to be five years old by December 2nd in order to enter kindergarten. I was b b born at the end of December, so I didn't qualify. So when I went into kindergarten, um, I was almost six. Um, so what we did is we've learned that the way that the brain functions at four years old and five years old, it's actually better to make sure that children entering ki kindergarten are five um, by September 2nd. So when we passed that um, legislation and bill, oh man, probably over well over a, a decade ago and started implementing it, it left this gap of children who were five years old but they didn't qualify to go to kindergarten. So we created transitional kindergarten. But transitional kindergarten has only been available for four-year-olds. Um, so, so for students that are uh, four by um, September 2nd. So we had a gap actually of six months. And what this is going to do is over the course of the next three and a half years, um, expand access and so that all four-year-olds have access to transitional kindergarten. So it's a huge deal. Um, one of the things for me, Jade, is we don't do enough for the middle class. So I not only is this a passion for me because we're giving you know access to pre transitional kindergarten is preschool to four year olds, but we're also doing something for the middle class. We're you know a, regardless of you know the amount of money that you make. You know, there's lots of families that can't afford childcare or preschool because they make um, too much money, but they don't make and they don't qualify for state subsidized preschool or, or um, but they don't make enough to spend, you know, $1,000 a month on a preschool program. So I'm really excited about this bill. We're supporting the middle class, supporting four-year-olds, getting them ready for kindergarten. Well, that sounds super awesome. And you're just saying that not just as your background as a mother yourself of a young child, but also mm -hmm. as an educator. Yeah, so I have a four-year-old daughter. She won't qualify. She's in preschool now. My, I ran a nonprofit preschool prior to coming to the assembly. Um, um, so, yes, I understand it from the policy perspective, from the advocacy perspective, um, from a provider perspective, and from a mama perspective. Well, sounds like you've got all those bases covered. <laughs> I do. <laughs> well, thank you for the explanation, Suzette. If you are just joining us, we are here with Assemblywoman Suzette martinez Valladares, who is telling us about what she's been working on over the past several weeks. Now, Suzette, we're getting into the middle of summer. Temperatures are heating up, and the risk for wildfires is getting higher than ever. And you have a bill on the docket related to wildfire management. Can you tell me more about it? Absolutely. Um, you know, growing up in Southern California, I'm a lifelong resident of SoCal, um, grew up in the San Fernando and Santa Cruz Valley. And, you know, wildfires have been ever present, um, but not to the extent that we've seen um, over the last decade and really the last couple of years. Um, I have, and part of the reason why wildfires are so um, prevalent is definitely climate change, but it's also this mismanagement of our forests um, and state lands that are creating um, um, fuel for wildfires. So what my bill does is it addresses um, and requires a CEQA exemption for any wildfire mitigation projects on national lands. So CEQA, um, is if, if you're trying to clear, you know, the Angeles forest of dead trees, um, if you know that a certain area needs a prescribed burn so that it doesn't burn hot and flare up and um, put our, our, our homes and businesses in danger um, on our federal lands, you have to apply for a CEQA exemption or, or a C you have to go through the CEQA process in California. Now, there's already a national process, um, NEPA, which you have to go through um, to do the same project. So it's duplicitous in California for our national forests for wildfire mitigation is duplicitous. So if we exempt 
um, are ex if we have this exemption, it's going to streamline the process. It's going to make the process more quick um, as, as well as less expensive. So it's actually really important. I'm really excited. It's in the, the bills. It, it did pass the assembly with bipartisan support um, it's in the Senate, and I'm hopeful um, that we get that passed you know, um, um, as soon as possible. So really exciting bill to affect wildfires in our community. We're surrounded by forests, Los Padres, uh, Angeles. Um, uh, we, it, it was ironic that the night before I presented this bill on the assembly floor, we had a wildfire or a fire break out um, in Castake, um, your um, Pitches Detention Center, the night before. So I was getting updates about this fire as I'm presenting, you know, this bill to address wildfires on the assembly floor. It was ironic and, and, and quite, quite frankly, a little sad. Yeah, absolutely. I believe that was the North Fire, which burned right from the jail up and over the hills, basically into a neighborhood in Valencia. I remember seeing it was right up to the fences. Yeah. I know a couple of our own staff were actually evacuated from homes in the area. So I can definitely see why you'd want to push that so much. That is definitely very weird timing on that one, though. Right. <laughs> Uh, now, another bill that you've introduced has to do with power outages and how I believe the either the state or the federal government is able to help offer recompense for damages caused by those power outages. Am I getting that correctly? Um, slightly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so um, you know, Jade, the um, the day I was sworn in, I was walking into Golden One. Um, we didn't have, obviously, we were in the middle of the pandemic. We mm -hmm. did not have a traditional swearing in here in the state assembly chambers. So we were being sworn in um, uh, to Golden One, at Golden One Theater in Sacramento, or Amphitheater. And I was getting text messages because there was PSPS, public safety power shutoff, um, going on in our district. And there was actually one in Simi Valley, and um, it actually ended up being, you know, kind of a scary situation. There was a constituent that was really upset. And um, it, it, I've been, my point is, I've been literally dealing with public safety power shutoffs and how um, since day one, since minute one of being sworn into office. Now, the amount of public safety power shutoffs um, that have occurred in our community have quadrupled. Um, in some of our community, um, people live in rural areas. They're on septic tanks. Um, they need electricity to pump water to their house. Um, some people have diabetes and need to keep their insulin cold. Um, there are parents that have had their kids at home working on, you know, Zoom. Um, so this, these public safety power shutoffs are happening so frequently, happening so much and affecting our daily lives. And it was really chaotic and, frankly, dangerous. The reason why they exist, exist is to mitigate wildfires, but they're creating these other safety situations that have been really detrimental to our community. So it's something that I wanted to start focusing on. I was watching a Facebook, and the kind of the thought came, I was watching a Facebook video from somebody at a dark intersection in Simi Valley in the middle of winter. And they watched, the power, the power was out, city street light was out. There were six cars that blew past this intersection because it was dark and there was no, you know, um, there was no light to indicate, you know, it's safe to cross. They couldn't even see the light or a stop sign. There wasn't a stop sign there, but there was no, uh, uh, vision was very hard. The, the last car that came in hit another car. And the problem um, with public safety power shutoffs is our cities have no control over them. It's the power companies that control the public safety power shutoffs would have to deal with the public safety aspect of it. So what my bill does, it creates a program that will provide resources for cities, for special districts, for tribes. Um, uh, it will provide grants so that they can purchase resources, whether it's generators, battery um, backups, um, so that when the lights go off because of public safety power shutoffs, they can still function as a city or as a district, whether it's water, street lights, um, you name it. Our cities, um, we need the resources to keep people safe during these public safety power shutoffs. That's just one aspect of it. Um, public safety power shutoffs um, need the amount need to decrease. We need to get to a place where we no longer need them. I've been working really hard 
um, with Edison, um, with the legislature, with the CPUC, the California Public Utilities Commission, to address public safety power shutoffs, um, to ask and require that Edison um, segment their grid uh, better, and they've been working on that. Re really hopeful that all of our, you know, fire season, which is kind of now, we're going to see less PSPS events because I've been working so hard on it. Well, that will definitely be relieving. I know that there were several people here, well, I should say probably several thousand people who are affected throughout Southern California, but specifically in and around the Santa Cruz Valley, there were people without fi without power for days over both Thanksgiving mm -hmm. and Christmas, which is, uh, you know, when you've got a turkey yeah. in the fridge, it's probably not <laughs> great that you can't keep anything cold or if you have any sort of electric powered cooking machine it's not exactly a great setup. <laughs> yeah, there were so many people like that had hundreds of dollars of food, food spoilage whose, you know, electronics um, needed to be replaced because, you know, the circuit blew in their refrigerator or their oven. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's been, it's really, you know, dramatically impacted people's lives and it can't, it can't continue to happen. No, Absolutely. So if you're just joining us, uh, everybody, we are still here with Assemblywoman Suzette Valladares, who is telling us about what she's been up to advocating for her constituents over the past couple of months. Now, Suzette, I know we're kind of coming into the end of our time here. So what should we be expecting to see from your office in the next couple of weeks? Yeah. So you should be expecting to see me in the next couple of weeks. I'm going to be in the district. Uh, we're breaking for summer recess on Thursday. Um, so I'm going to be meeting with constituents, um, going to a variety of community events, having vaccine clinics. Um, my office staff is still working really hard um, on, on, you know, hundreds of EDD cases for people who are not getting, receiving their benefits. Um, I have, you know, five um, staffers in our office working full time just on EDD cases. Um, so that is a huge priority for me and for my office. Um, so stop by, find us online at um, our um, Suzette Valadares, um, and we can help you with your EV cases, your DMV cases. Um, also, reach out to me if there's an event that you're hosting. Would love to meet um, meet you as things are now opening up. Uh, I'm excited. I'm going to go to Six Flags Magic Mountain because I haven't been there in way too long, and I'm going to be supporting our local businesses, as, as well as um, a, a visit and site tour of the Reagan Library, I'm super excited about. I actually presented a resolution on um, Nancy Reagan recognizing her centennial birthday um, this past Monday. Amazing woman. So um, uh, you'll, you'll see more of me in the district and uh, more of me fighting for, for you. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Suzette, or I should say afternoon. For all of our listeners out there, you'll be able to read more about Assemblywoman Valladares and what she's been up to in Sacramento over on our website at hometownstation.com or on social media at KHTS Radio. There's a 